What is up YouTube and YKF31 here bringing you a Madden 13 online friends list game. You know I wouldn't have taken me too long to dust off Peyton Manning <laughs> and take Peyton Manning and the Broncos for a little test drive and I'm playing a friends list game against one of the OS Vets online franchise members actually a two-time OS Vets Bowl Madden 12 champion, Mr. Emmett Smith 22, using his Dallas Cowboys. And I'm rolling with the uh, Bill Walsh playbook. By far my favorite playbook in the game so far. I'm, look I'm looking forward to um, trying out some of the other classic playbooks. Nice little touch in the game this year. Hope they don't go away. And the Chicago Bears playbook as well and testing out how I have Denver Broncos set up to run the cover two. Had to make some lineup changes on the defensive side of the ball. DJ Williams plays middle linebacker. Von Miller is at one defensive end with Elvis Dumerville. And I have Warren and their rookie Justin Bannon at defensive tackle. Nice solid anchors, the best anchors that they have there. And Robert Ayers as a backup pass rusher, situational pass rusher at defensive tackle as well. And we go from there as far as putting in the best combination of speed, um, tackling, awareness, coverage, and all that good stuff at the other outside linebacker spots and everything else stays the same. And I have good old reliable, my old buddy Jim Leonard. Nice, nice, nice. Only risk is that Doomerville is a little fragile. He gets fatigued very fast and he's a bit of an injury risk and I was thinking of putting Miller at linebacker because he does have 70 coverage, but he's such a good pass rusher. He's an excellent pass rusher so that I decided to just throw him in on the defensive so end the other team and well. take my you chances. You get surprised. But big plays. This will be fun to watch. the main focus of this video or this commentary will be my season preview of the NFL. The NFL is back. Line. Week one has already gotten one game in the books. The Cowboys and the Giants. With the Cowboys prevailing over the reigning Super Bowl champions. And ironically enough, those are the two teams that I feel are going to finish 1-2 in that division. I think, I just have a hunch that this is the Cowboys year where it kind of clicks for them. And they take care of business and win that division. And the Giants will finish second and get into the playoffs as a wild card. Leaving Philly to fight for a second wild card with um, the rest of the NFC wild card contenders. And Washington bringing up the rear in that division. It's not that I don't think Philly is dangerous and Philly is capable of putting together a good team. I just... Something about Philly, they're certainly explosive and on their best day they can be a pain in the neck to defend. And when the defense is clicking and Cole and Babbitt and all of them are getting after it, they're tough to deal with. But the thing with Philly that I just don't like is that they're like that fast, sleek, sexy sports car that gets dinged up if you breathe on it. You know, Vic is fragile. Deshaun Jackson is fragile. You just have a lot of pieces that, while they are explosive, you just wonder if they're going to stay in one piece or end up in pieces. And that's the thing with Vic. I'm not a big Vic fan. Given the way that he plays, he's going to take hits, he's going to get banged up, and if you take away Vic's legs, he's still the guy who has trouble beating you from the pocket on a consistent basis. He had a good year, his first full year in that offense, but I think when push comes to shove and you make Vic a pocket passer as much as you possibly can, you'll eventually beat them in a big game. So... As far as the rest of the NFC goes, in the yeah, NFC North you have Green Bay who had a 15-1 season but did not 
throws the pass. Win the ultimate prize, and while I think the Packers are still going to be good, I don't think they're going to be 15 and one good. I see more like 12 and four, 13 and three, something like that. The problem I have with the Packers, or the worry I have with the Packers, is that when you have a big time regular season like that, you sometimes don't get it back again. You know, you don't get that same continuity, that same chemistry. Things don't click and gel quite the same. You don't quite get the same bounce of the ball. And you might not ever get back to that point again. I think of the 1998 Minnesota Vikings. That 15-1 and unit with Randall Cunningham. Robert Smith, Randy Moss, Chris Carter, Jake Reed, one of the best offenses the league has ever seen. They had one of those seasons where everything just hit on all cylinders. They put up insane numbers. They put up over 550 points, but they lost a conference title game on their home field. And they never got it back. The next year they went 10-6. and six. Following year, they went 11 and five, and then five and 11, six and 10, and the windows was, was closed. So the NFL football is a very fleeting game. It's a very, very fleeting game. And that window is open. You got to jump through it because you don't know whether that window is going to be open on the back end or not. It usually isn't in football. So that's my one concern with the Packers: whether they kind of lose a little bit off of that fastball and they don't quite regain it. Because the division has gotten a little bit better. You have Chicago. They have Brandon Marshall back. Chicago was right in the thick of things before Two Cutler went down. That pretty much play. sabotaged Four their season. Forte coming off a great season. Well, and I think Mike Martz's system, as big of a Mike Listen, Martz fan that I am, ugly plays that don't work. You just gotta keep running it. I don't think it really fit that personnel very much. I think a much more balanced game will help keep Cutler in one piece. Um, and help maximize the talent that they have. Detroit's getting better, still learning how to win a young team that's still coming together. Health at their QB position is vital. You know, Stafford has shown that he, when he's in one piece, is as good as anybody else in that conference and in the NFL as a whole. You have Megatron, you have a fierce defensive line. It's just a matter of that team continuing to grow up. The NFC West is just the Niners and, you know, the rest isn't really worth writing home about. <laughs> that's there for the Niners to take advantage of. And that's why I still believe that if Philadelphia finishes third, they're not completely out of the uh, playoff hunt in the NFC. Because what's the difference between Philly, Detroit, Chicago, Atlanta, and Carolina? You know, you put any of those teams in a hat, shake it up, pick two of them out. You know, one's as good as the other, really, and there's not a whole heck of a lot separating them. You know, the Saints are still among the class of the conference, conference in the class of the league, even though they have some issues to deal with from a suspension standpoint, obviously. I believe that they're still going to have enough to win that division because I just keep on waiting for the Atlanta Falcons and Matt Ryan to make that next step, and it never comes. I'm a big Matt Ryan fan. I've been a fan of his since college, and they have playmakers. They have talent on offense. They have some playmakers on defense. Johnny Abraham still has some gas in the tank. Weatherspoon is a really nice player. They play a kind of passive style. I think they should, they'd be well served getting after it a little bit more. But they just seem to be stuck in a plateau. They just can't break through. And I'm not quite ready to, you know, anoint the Carolina Panthers as the next up-and-coming thing either. I still want to see Cam Newton um, do more, do it again for another year. The thing with Cam is that, yes, he put up big yardage in some games. He had a good rookie season, but he also had a lot of clunkers. A lot of games where we had QB ratings under 70, and a lot of games when we, when we did play well and put up passing numbers, it was because the game was out of hand, they're playing hurry up and catch up, and they had no choice but to throw. So I still want to see him do more 
and evolve more as defensive coordinators now have a season's worth of film on him, have studied him, and are going to be game planning for him right off the jump. I think he suffered, or benefited from rather, the uh, lockout out of the gate, and that uh, padded his numbers a little bit. You still have Stevie Smith, one of my favorite players in the league, a guy who, when he's in the mood, can destroy a game, but I was disappointed that they didn't draft Michael Floyd or acquire a receiver that could help um, Cam out more because Smith can't play forever. And while you have a good ground game with Cam and you still have D'Angelo Williams there, you're relying on the development of guys like um, Brandon LaFell keeping Greg Olson in one piece. Just guys like Lewis Murphy. Not a whole heck of a lot there outside of Stevie Smith to, you know, get you excited. So I'm not quite sold on Carolina being the next young, up-and-coming team to look out for. So my division picks in the NFC are the Giants finishing, not the Giants, the Cowboys finishing first in the East along with the, I think the Saints will have enough to repeat in the, um, whatchamacallit, NFC South. I think Green Bay will have enough to repeat in the NFC North. San Francisco runs away with the NFC West. And the wild cards will be the Giants and I'm going to pick my favorites. <laughs> I'm going to go with Atlanta. I'm going to go with the Falcons. So those are my playoff teams for the... NFC and to come out of the NFC I'm going to go with San Francisco they got a taste of it last season they play bedrock defense they play rock solid ball control take care of the ball offense they keep Alex Smith in a comfort zone and I believe with their combination of defense and efficient mistake-free offense they're going to come out of the NFC over in the AFC let me start out and get my Jets out of the way I think this is the season that it comes crashing down I think the Jets are going to spontaneously combust. They're going to have a fractured locker room. And this is the year that the Rex Ryan, Mike Tannenbaum circus comes tumbling down. I'm in an odd position as a Jets fan because I'm in a position where I hate my coach. I hate my general manager. I hate my team. <laughs> we have no offense. I don't think it's all Sanchez's fault. I think Sanchez... Sanchez reminds me a lot of Alex Smith. Alex Smith went through dysfunctional situations in San Francisco. Sanchez in a situation where his head coach is a, is a buffoon. He has no real offensive mind to help him develop and to help him um, learn. He's kind of out there fending for himself. His receivers are cancerous. He has an average running back and a so-so offensive line. So the guy hasn't really been helped out a lot. The defense, as great as Revis is, is a bit on the overrated side. Where's the pass rush going to come from? You have one great player in Revis and then you have a good player in David Harris and, you know, a hot and cold player in Camardi. But you don't have much in the way of game changers on the front seven and at the safety position. Landry, hopefully he can stay healthy. He'll be a big boost. 
you know, but who knows. So I think this is the year that the Jets have that bottom out season that gets everybody fired and hopefully gets a mind like John Gruden in there <laughs> to get things back to a respectable level. New England, I think, is going to win the division. Miami's going to be horrible. You know, Buffalo, I have no read on Buffalo whatsoever. They made some splashes of Mario Williams. They've certainly improved themselves, and they can certainly finish second in the division, but I don't know if that's going to be enough to get them into the playoffs because of the freaking AFC North where you have Baltimore, Pittsburgh, and Cincinnati. Who in the world to pick out of that group? That's tough. That's really tough. I think the Ravens had their last best chance to get to the Super Bowl last season. Ray Lewis has to get old at some point. You know, Terrell Suggs. You know, health is very much in question with his Achilles. They have a decent enough offense. Joe Flacco is kind of like the AFC version of Matt Ryan. You just keep on waiting for him to get to that next step. And he's got some tools. You know, Ray Rice is as good as any back in the league. Anquan Bolden is a solid receiver. Um, Torrey Smith looks like he has a chance to be a um, Mike Wallace type. But if I had to, you know, life on the line, pick one team out of those three, assuming that uh, everyone is healthy, I got to go with Pittsburgh. You got to go with Pittsburgh, don't you? Followed by Cincy. And Baltimore showing a little bit of age coming in at um, number three and scratching and clawing in the wild card mix, which they have a chance to get because I don't think the AFC um, East is going to have a contender there. AFC West will have a contender more than likely since those teams historically play pretty close to each other to each other, but I believe that Pittsburgh and Cincy are the two best teams in that division. In the AFC West, I'm going with the Peyton Manning bandwagon. I'm picking the Denver Broncos all the way and not looking back. <laughs> with the Chargers and Raiders, all of them having a fighting chance. I mean, Denver won the division at 8-8 eight eight last season, and KC was last at 7-9, and nine, so going into this season, you have Denver replacing Tebow with Peyton, and the, you know, he has Tammy at tight end, and the rest of the you know, team is pretty much um, the same outside of uh, Tracy Porter, who comes in, and Brian Dawkins, who retired. But you already had a good enough core to win the division, plus you add one of the top, you know, two or three QBs in the league. So you have to like their chances. AFC South, I really like Houston. I like Houston to come out of the AFC, actually. They're my pick to get the Super Bowl out of the AFC. Tennessee, I'm rooting hard for Jake Locker. It'll be third down. I don't think the team is quite ready to bust through yet, but I think they're going to be um, on that right path to eventually getting there. Jacksonville is going to be one of the, you know, bottom feeders of the league, and as the Colts are built around luck, they'll surprise some teams, but ultimately I don't think they have enough to really um, threaten anything more than... 7 and 9 or 8 and 8. I'm rooting hard for the Cleveland Browns. Something about the Browns that is just likable. <laughs> it's, it's impossible not to like the Cleveland Browns. You know, I think they have a guy who has a chance to contend for Rookie of the Year and Richardson. Trent Richardson. He's certainly going to get the opportunity. But the Browns need a lot of help, and I feel they're going to be a couple of years away from seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. But I want to happen. The league will be a better place if the Browns um, 
get back into the mix of things. So my picks to get to the Super Bowl are the Houston Texans. Love their offense. Their defense is better than people think. Matt Schaub is one of the better under the radar QBs outside of the mainstream and people generally acknowledge the top guys in the league um, Brady, Big Ben, Peyton, Phillip Rivers, Drew Brees, Aaron Rodgers, Eli uh, Matt Schaub isn't that far behind he's a very productive guy he's in that you know Tony Romo type of um, category you know Schaub and Romo are behind the Eli's, the Roethlisberger's Brady's and Manning's of the world, but they're ahead of the um, Matt Ryan's and Joe Flacco's of the world and uh, Matthew Stafford's who, you know, has only done it for one season staying in one piece. So the Niners and the Houston Texans will be your Super Bowl participants with the Niners winning the Super Bowl. Your MVPs, your MVP will be, hmm, league MVP. Can I pick a league MVP without picking a quarterback? No, I don't think I can. I'll go with Aaron Rodgers with league MVP. I'll go with, I'll go with Patrick Willis as defensive player of the year. And I will go with... Everybody Andrew Luck for Offensive Rookie of the Year. Defensive Rookie of the Year, gosh. That's a tough one. Defensive Rookie of the Year. Hmm. Throw some names out at me. I'm gonna go with Maurice Claiborne. I like the way the kid looked. So I'll go with him. Coach of the Year, I'll go with Gary Kubiak. So, let's see how the season shakes out.